Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of Vols fans. We're your host, Bull and P. And in today's video, we're going to be recapping the game from yesterday. Our Vols go down in tragic fashion. Uh, but we do have a chance to redeem ourselves today at 2 o'clock. And we think that we will do it. We'll kind of just break that down and talk about what we didn't do well and what we need to do better. Moving forward to still have a chance to get to that game on Monday and win this whole doggone thing. We'll also be talking about the official visits. Sounds like there's some really good news coming out of Knoxville on that. Uh, so, you know, that's something for us to kind of be happy about and looking forward to. But as always, y'all, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so obviously we're going to be starting off with the baseball game from yesterday. We did lose to Texas A&M 9-5 in a game that we did kind of rally back into, uh, but we just did not play our best. Something that I guess is kind of a positive piece that this was the worst game I think we've played all season and we're still in it right there at the end. So maybe that gives us a little bit more hope moving forward. But let's go through my favorite part of the stats with the hitting. Uh, so Texas A&M had 13 hits to our 12. They had two home runs to our two home runs. They had 21 total bases to our 19. And they had eight runners left on base to our 10. So just looking at that, it looks pretty even. Let's go on to the pitching stats. They had 17 strikeouts to our 11. 17 strikeouts has got to be the most that we've had all season, P. I just, I, I don't remember any game that we had this much trouble hitting. And I don't even know if it was necessarily their stuff or if we just weren't focused, but we'll kind of get into that here in just a minute. Also, 128 strikes to 115. We already talked about the hits that were allowed from both teams. And then we had three walks apiece. So let's go on to the box score right here, P. And let's take a look at each individual player. We'll just kind of go through this kind of briefly, right? So starting off with Simo, he was a no-show yesterday. Last night, we need for him to give us something. And things like this can happen, right? I mean, Baseball is streaky, but this is a really bad time for him to be entering into a little bit of a slump. Seems like in that Florida State series, it was a little bit of a slump there. That's kind of like when it started. But he's a good enough player, P, that I believe that he can get up out of this slump. But what do you think about just seeing him up at the plate and not being able to get us any hits last night? Yeah, man, his uh, this didn't lot look like himself. His timing was off. You know, he was still trying to be aggressive. He was up there taking his swings, you know, taking his hacks at it. But he was just, his, his timing was off, man. Like, it's, like we kind of talked about off air, just kind of like maybe he was playing – MLB the show or something and like it threw his timing off which I've experienced that before you know you play video games it can throw your timing off in real life which is kind of crazy but I think when you when you look at him and then you kind of look at the the bottom half of that lineup I think you know once that like once that lineup turns over you know in the second third inning whatever you know you're pretty much going you know 0 for 1 0 for 2 0 for 3 and then back to him 0 for 5 so you're getting four or five guys in a row that are getting out I think that kind of came back to uh kind of show its show its head there with the final score yeah, and then on to Blake Burke. I think that he had a decent showing at the plate. He did strike out three times, and uh, he did score one run for us, and he got two hits on five at-bats. Uh, you know, I think he's doing a pretty good job out in the field. There was one throw from the next guy. I believe that it was from Billy Amick that it kind of, like, bounced. And, I mean, that's a tough play for, Bill, for, for Blake Burke to make, but at the same time, in a finals game, you've got to – I mean, we've got to be making those plays. So the errors definitely hurt us. We had three last night. But anyway, I, you know, I feel like Billy Amick did a decent job at the play. Somehow he only got three at-bats. I don't know how that ended up happening. Well, yeah, it's because he, he, he had two walks. When you're walking, it doesn't count. Really. Oh, okay. All right. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. So, okay. Now, I do like that. I like the fact that he was able to get those walks. Something else, P. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about this maybe here after we go through all these stats. But the umpire was extremely inconsistent. And I think yeah. that it played more in Texas A&M's favor than it did for us. There was several times that he's – I mean, it was – uh, you know, guys that are going down looking because the ball is almost bouncing off of the ground. I mean, like, you've, you've got to be a lot more consistent with your strike zone, and that's what I don't like. We did say coming into this one that if his strike zone is bigger, it favors Tennessee because Texas A&M is so patient at the plate, but it actually didn't work in our favor because he was very inconsistent. And I've seen a couple of things from some Tennessee fans saying that he is a known Texas homer, that he has, uh, you know, helped Texas teams win games a lot. And I don't know how true that is, but that's kind of the way that it felt uh, in last night's game. But anyway, I think that Billy Amick, you know, him being patient at, at the plate is good, but we need to get all of our guys today, I feel like, hitting, uh, you know, on a much higher clip. Now, the next player, P, Dylan Dryling, I think that he looked great, okay? Make, making hits, making plays when we needed the most, giving us that offensive spark. He did hit a homer, and then him and uh, Inslee go back to back. So what do you think about those two players and what they showed at the plate, but also on defense? Man, I, I love those guys play, man. Uh, you know, they just seem like they're two very consistent guys. Doesn't really matter, you know, who's hot, who's cold. Those two guys typically will show up for you. Um, you know, I, I would love to get Inslee back out there on defense. Now we talked about this as well is, 
I think that uh, you know we're we're we're, we're kind of hurting a little bit in right field with 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 him, with Emsley being out and Tears having to move to center. Now Tears, he looks good wherever he's at, like you said. But I think we need to move him back to right field, get Emsley out there. How how bad is the hamstring injury? You know, I, mean, I don't know. You know, it must be pretty bad if he can't go. But we'll see if Coach uh, Coach V makes that move and says, "Hey, son, you have to go out here and do do you know give her off Tennessee today and let's go win this ball game." Yeah, so. yeah, and then you know after he hit his home run, I noticed that he wasn't really celebrating a lot with Dryling, and Dryling kind of looked at him like, "What's going on with you, man?" So I don't know if it was because he was down that we were losing, or if he's down because he wasn't out in the field and he felt like, "Man, if I was out there, we probably would have won this game," or if it was because his hamstring was maybe a little bit too tight and he didn't want to jump and aggravate it or whatever. But hmm. that is, I mean, I feel like if we're going to be able to win this series, if we're going to be able to turn it around, win one today and then win another one on Monday. We definitely need to have our outfielders, our, our best outfielders out there. Um, and, you know, I would even say that Bargo looks like a better outfielder than Chapman does. Chapman just, he just did not have a very good game at all. So on two tiers, who also didn't give us anything at the plate, you know, he struck out three times. We need for our guys, right? Like the guys who are supposed to be the guys in, in this lineup have got to contribute. Now, I do feel like Tears is right there, okay? And I would say that's normally what he does. He'll give you a home run, and then maybe, like, for the next two to three games, he's this, like, you know, he kind of gets off, but then you could tell that he's about to get back into that groove whenever he's right on top of the ball. So I feel like that's where he is. Um, and P, like you said, he looked really good out there fielding. Need for him to continue to do that. I mean, really several great, great plays by him. You know, diving catches. That's what we need. Um, and then on to Curly. I think that he looked good at the plate. Um, looks like he got struck out once, but he also got two hits. Uh, did he get walked at all? No, he didn't get walked. So I like the way that he's batting. He's not being overly patient, but he is being patient enough that he's making Texas A&M bring the pitches to him. So we need for him to keep uh, to keep on doing that. I don't remember him really making any plays out in the field, but I'm sure that he did. These games for me, P, are starting to kind of like <laughs> run all into one. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. just need for him to keep on playing with some confidence. Like we said with Chapman, you know, comes off, uh, you know, as the DH for us, doesn't give us anything. And then Bargo comes in as the DH. I want to say maybe in the eighth or ninth inning, whatever, but... I mean, he doesn't really give us anything either. Our our DH is somebody's got to give us something. This is it's crunch time now. Everybody's got to give us a little bit of something. Whatever your game is, you need to start playing to it, and it needs to be at its highest level. And then we'll uh, come on down here to Cal Stark, who we know that he's really good at the plate, um, or he's really good behind the plate, um, <laughs> you know, as a catcher. But at the plate, man, he has been struggling this whole time. Like he's been struggling pretty much since the end of the season. Or, I mean, he, he might have done something maybe like in the regionals and super regionals, but he's going to have to step it up. You know, we're seeing that he's giving us some more patience at the plate, but we're going to need for him to start getting some hits or something uh, because he really is not giving us a thing. Now mm -hmm. on down to the pitching, P. This right here, um, you know, this is, this is where I feel like we really ultimately lost this game at, and I don't know if it was just because their stuff was so good or if we were just completely off, but... The, the first guy, Prager, he's one of their, or he is their best starter. So the good news for us is that they do, um, you know, their next guys that are probably going to be starting are not as good, right? So the next guy that might get the start today is, uh, is Justin Lampkin, and he's been three and two. He's got a five ERA. The other guy that could start today would be Tanner Jones. He's three and one, and he's got a 6.33 ERA. So, I mean, as far as the, you know, starting pitching, we are going to have the, the upper hand for sure. We think that Beam's going to be getting the start for us today. But you see right here, man, he had a six strikeouts. Uh, and then the next pitcher that came in for them, Stewart, he had four strikeouts. And then the last guy, this Austin Beck, comes in, and he gets just seven strikeouts out of the 17 in only two innings. So, I mean, his stuff looked, it looked really, really good. We'll probably won't see him today because he did pitch, what, uh, he threw 46 pitches. So, you know, maybe he won't pitch today unless they get into some sort of a bond and they feel like they're going to throw him back out there. But if they do that and then if they lose, then they're in a really tough spot for Monday's game. So maybe that might work in our benefit. But, I mean, looking at our pitchers, P, please explain to me why are we doing this Stamos and then Causey thing? Because <laughs> it did not work. I don't really, it has not worked. It's actually just been like, man, like they come in and they kind of get us in this hole and then we have to climb back out of it. So what do you, I mean, like, do you think there's any rhyme or reason to us doing this? No, I mean, I, I think it's something we've heard people touch on. Like, it, I mean, is it like superstition or something? I mean, we kind of just always do it for some reason. You know, I guess to say it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. But I mean, it is broke. You know, yeah. we're we've been winning in spite of it. I feel like, um, you know, and I think Cosby comes in here. I think he gives us some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Somehow people are hitting him. 
I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like he comes in here and he gives you some quality, a couple quality innings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Stamos, I think when he gets you off to that to that bad start the way he did, I mean, it's it's tough climbing out of that hole. And, you know, we're able to overcome it against Florida State game one. Mm-hmm. But against a team like AM that has the good pitching they do and you know the bats as well. Like it's it's just tough, man. They don't make mistakes. It's just tough. So yeah, I don't want to see him the rest of the series. And uh, you know, let's see 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 how that helps us go out here and win these next two games. Yeah, and then too, I mean, if you look at it, we didn't really throw anyone that I feel like we would necessarily need today, right? Um, you know, Kirby, but Kirby only throws 13 pitches. So I mean, if he if we need for him to come in again today. He can come back out today. But outside of that, I mean, we did not really dive deep, deep into our bullpen, which I think is a really good thing, obviously, for us moving forward. Um, And, you know, I'm going to tell you all right here that Texas A&M does still have six more pitchers that we have not seen that are really, really good. And they've got five that have an ERA up under three. Um, And then the only guy that is up over three is Brock Peary, and he's got a 3.6 ERA. So those are the guys that we're going to be looking at Moving forward, uh, you know, again, I don't know exactly who the starters will be, but if it's the ones that they've been rolling out there before, we should have the upper hand, P. And what do you feel like we need to do to make sure that we can win today? And then, well, let's just talk about today because, you know, Monday is not promised to us. We've got to win today. I feel like, number one, P, we've got to get off to a good start, you know, starting off with the guys that, you know, at the top of that lineup, they've got to do well versus these starters that should not be as good as, as ours. But what else do you think we, we need to do to make sure that, that we can win today? Well, I mean, to me, I think the big thing, I mean, our pitching wasn't great, but I think the hitting, I think when I, when I, when I look at the box score and I look at the lineup, okay, you go from what, what's tears batting? Uh, sixth, you go from hitter six all the way through nine and then back to one, Christian Moore. All those guys were over besides, besides uh, Curly. The rest of those guys were over. So that means basically once we get to tears, um like we're like we're done like like we're done until we get back to burke you know what i mean so like that's that's how many guys it is what five you know four or five six guys in a row they ain't gonna give you nothing i think we've got to be more consistent throughout the lineup i think that's gonna light a bit of push guys you know move 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 runners across the base paths and get some guys knocked in i think that's kind of part of the reason why we saw you know 10 guys left on base whatever it was um you know we, we've got to be consistent through the lineup get some more out of you know hitters seven eight nine uh and of course, you know, Christian Moore as well. I think that's going to lead to more runs, I think. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we will see, man, at two o'clock, you know, definitely let us know y'all's thoughts down in the comments section. But P, how do you feel just coming into this game? Because honestly speaking, I, I have confidence. But the one thing that I will say that I noticed kind of like towards the end of yet, well, not even towards the end, I would say maybe about halfway through yesterday's game is there were several players, several of our guys that I just didn't really see that fight like we've seen in previous series. This kind of mm-hmm. looked like, I don't know if they were uninterested, if they said, well, you know what, this one's over and we expect to come out win tomorrow than win on Monday. Or if they're like, man, you know, they're just, their pitching is just too good and we can't find a way to hit them. That mm-hmm. right there does give me a little bit of cause for concern. So I want to see us again early on. I want to see that juice, that fire. I want to see that fight. Um, and, you know, that will tell me a lot about how this game is going to go because I feel like we can most definitely close it out. But how do you feel about this game, Pete? Do you have a lot of confidence in this? I would say on the scale of one to ten, where are you at? Yeah, I would say, you know, I mean, I'm at Dagum 10. You know, I believe in this team. I think this is a team that likes their back against the wall. You know, uh, you think about the game, game one against Florida State, CMO, two strikes, bottom of the ninth, last out. Let's fight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is where this team shows up. This is when this team plays ball. I think we'll see this team come out on fire. Um, don't be surprised if CMO returns the favor that their leadoff guy did to us last night and mm-hmm. gets a you know, opening, opening pitch, home run, whatever it is, yep. um, opening that bat home run leads us off the right way. Um, but I feel, I feel great about this game. Uh, I think we'll win in dramatic fashion and then we'll go, we'll take it to game three and see how it goes. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So let's switch it on over to the official visit. Y'all it is football time in Tennessee. Almost uh, pretty much man. Like once this series is over, then it is 100% going to be pretty much focused on football. So it, it sounds like P we did a good job with these OVs over the weekend. And just looking at this list, several really big time players coming up here. Douglas Utu's one. Uh, We haven't heard from him just yet. The insiders have not come out and told us what he had to say, but I feel good about our chances. If we could land him, that would help us out tremendously. Um, Oh, and then too, let me also tell y'all, for those of y'all that this is y'all's first time seeing this, everyone that's in green, that's the players that I feel like Tennessee has a really good shot to land. But I mean, you know, we've got a good shot to land all these players. Uh, Bryce Jenkins, it sounds like he loved his visit. He's planning on making a decision here within like the next week or maybe at the beginning of July. 
Um, but, you know, that's a guy that can play on offensive line for you. He can play on the defensive line for you. We want him to play defensive tackle. It sounds like he really likes Coach Chop and Coach Garner. Um, and it sounds like he loves Tennessee. So I think we're in a good spot with him. But, P, what do you think about just these first two players that we just talked about? Um, you're talking uh, Jenkins and Otu. Uh, Otu, yeah. I mean, love love both the films. Otu's a guy who comes in and can play, can really play anywhere he needs to play on offensive line for you, um, guard or tackle. Um, probably play inside for us. I mean, big, beefy guy, mauler, athletic, can do it all. Um, not sure what his interest level is in us, but we'll love to add him. I think he's he could be a day one type of guy for you. And then Bryce Jenkins, he's a guy I know he's behind us for, I mean, for a while, ever since I first seen him talk about us. He seemed like he really liked us a lot. Loves Coach G, like you said, Coach Chop. I like him on the defense side, uh, defense side of the ball, but he could play offense too. A big, beefy guy. I like, you know, we just added uh, Charles House um, yesterday, I think it was, and 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 him. I mean, that's that's two three hundred plus pound interior guys, which we know we're kind of like there after tw after twenty twenty four season. So um, I I think he'll commit, and uh, he's going to be a great piece to add. Yeah, I mean, shoot, we still got Ethan Utley too, so we're really turning a lot of our weaknesses uh, into strengths moving forward. So I love to see that. And then Marion Die, that's one that I really, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I have not seen anything just yet. And actually, let me see if there's anything that has been posted. But he's one, man, I'm going to tell you, quietly, I mean, he is turning into one of my favorite players in this <laughs> class. It cannot be understated, okay, uh, you know, or, or it cannot be overstated how much of a problem he is going to be. Because if he's anywhere near 265, I'll say, on his junior film, the way that he's out there moving around, dude, that he could play Leo, he could play out in space, he could play strong side DN, and we're talking about, hey, you know, maybe he's going to gain 20 to 30 pounds his first couple of years up on campus. He can play defensive tackle for you, but we're talking about a guy that is big enough to play defensive tackle and athletic enough to play at end. So maybe like a 300-pound strong side defensive end. When's the last time we've seen, I mean, dude, I'm getting very excited. I hope that we can get him because, yeah. I mean, he's going to be a five-star inside of our system. But, um, you know, we uh, also heard about Jaden Woods. Uh, you know, I kind of listened to him talk. He's a guy that it sounds like he likes Tennessee. Like I said before, I feel like uh, Penn State might be where he ends up at. And, uh, you know, he just talked about really liking the coach's IQ and that the coaches liked his IQ. They liked his versatility. That he could play at Leo or he could play at strong side defensive end for us. Um, I'm just curious as to what he measured in at, P. Like, what do you see? Have, have you gotten a chance to kind of look at his film some? Yeah, yeah, I believe I saw you, uh, your film talking about him. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he's what does he go about? What is it, like 6'2", 230, 6'3", 230? Yeah, 230, yeah. Like that. 6 3, 2, yeah. I mean, so when I watch this film, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, nothing really pops off at you, mm -hmm. but the way he uses his hands and kind of some of his moves, I mean, think, I think your analysis is great. Like, he looks like a, like a Penn State guy. Like, he just, it just looks like stuff that's going to work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, some guys, they get they put up numbers and stuff, and you watch them, they're like, man, he doesn't do anything special. Yeah. That's kind of the, what I get from him, you know what I mean? He's one of those type of guys. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you know, I, mean, I don't know. You know, I think he'll be a good player. Um, we'll just kind of see how it goes. Yeah. So, anyway, it sounds like he's probably going to be um, – it sounds like he wants to make a decision very soon, but it's going to be between us, Wisconsin, Penn State, and Purdue. Like I said, I feel like it's probably going to be us and Penn State. And he's from mm -hmm. Kansas, so – I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's, but I mean, you know, it's pretty much us in Big Ten schools. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Can we beat James Franklin for this kid? That's going to be the question uh, at the end of the day. Now let's move on uh, to Shady Hayward. We have not heard from him just yet either, P. But obviously that would be huge for us because this is something that I want us to kind of talk about. I've talked about it before, but I haven't done it with you, P. I think that we might have a little bit of a problem at safety if Will Brooks is going to be our starter this season. I mean, I, I just don't understand how Kobe Thomas looks as good as he's looked on film, even at Middle Tennessee State versus Alabama, or if we're talking about him in spring practice with us. I mean, we've seen him looking pretty good. So mm -hmm. if all of a sudden we're saying that Will Brooks might be the guy, that's what some of the other insiders are saying, you know, does that mean that Will Brooks is just taking that gigantic leap forward? Or is Kobe Thomas just not who we thought he was? And how much of a of a big deal is it for us to get a really good safety in this year's class. So they're saying that Will Brooks is going to start over. I thought they were saying he's going to take turn time spot. No, they're well, saying he's going to. That's that's wow. not. So what I heard specifically was it sounds like Will Brooks is going to be starting and turn time is going to be the other starter. Man, I mean, I I disagree with. Both man, of, I mean, I disagree this, with both is, of those. Honestly, is this, is this Trayvon Flowers, Tank McCullough two point oh? I mean, you know, there's no way in the world I think that happens. I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's just kind of a little, you know. I don't know what to call that, yeah, but there's no way in the freaking world. I think you got a guy like Jacoby Thomas. I think he starts. 
And I think, I mean, if nothing else, you got a guy like John Slaughter that starts as well. Um, now, Will Brooks, you know, he's a guy we like him a lot. Great guy, great kid, gives us off Tennessee. But when you're talking about, you know, athletic ceilings, um, you know, going against, you know, compete against the Bamas, the Georgias, the Texases, the teams like that, Ohio State's mm-hmm. teams we'll see in the playoffs. You need guys that can go back there. Now, mm-hmm. um, I just don't see that happening. Uh, you know, we'll see. So for me, you know, I can't really say anything about the development of these safeties uh, because I don't believe that's the case. I believe we're going to see John Slaughter and Terrence Tyne, those guys, mm-hmm. Jacoby Thomas. I think they're going to do very well. Now, if we get out there and they haven't performed well, then, yeah, I mean, heck, you know, somebody's got to go, whether it's Martinez, whether it's Tim Banks. Somebody's got to freaking go because we have more than enough talent. See, we have more <laughs> than to be successful there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no excuse in my mind. Yeah, so, I mean, Tim Banks, I would hate to see him go because I think he's doing a good job as a as a DC, but as yeah. a maybe, like, evaluator of talent at the safety position or, you know, maybe even as, like, as a coach at that position, maybe we go out and hire somebody else that's more of a, of a true, just focus on the D safety type of guy because, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, that, that would be unbelievable. But, so, back to my point about Shady, I think that he, I mean, he means a lot more to this program right now than we thought that he would even kind of coming into this. And, you know, we we like him a lot. Like, I still think that he's probably my favorite player. But it's starting to get close between him and Marion Die. Like, they're 1A, 1B for me. I love both of those guys. But I still think, at the end of the day, Tennessee's doing a good job with him. And we have to land him. I feel like we will land him. I think that he will be. I think he's set to announce August the 7th. But um, I think that he's going to be coming home, P. Where are you at with a level of confidence that we can land him? Yeah, I feel very confident. Um I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not sure if that August 7th commitment date, if that's uh, like a special date, if that's somebody's birthday or something. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if if that's not a special date, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes ahead and commits, you know, this week, you know, comes because I mean, this because all the kind of shenanigans, well, naming all his other teams as leaders, you know, after their visits, visits with them. Uh, I think he comes out of this visit and we go ahead and lock him down. You know, I think Coach Heupel, he doesn't usually put the hard press on guys, but I think, you know, they kind of sit down and say, hey, you know, you've been talking all this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, are you with us or not? He'll say, yeah, I'm with you. And I'll say, well, go ahead and commit then and go ahead and announce it. And uh, mm-hmm. so I'm going to surprised if he goes ahead and announce it soon here. Like I said, unless that August 7th is like his grandma's birthday or something like that. I like these guys do. Yeah. So, um, and I told y'all yesterday that I would come back to you with the five-star safety in 2026's class. It's very high up on Tennessee. Zaylis Hicks. So he went from Parkview to Carrollton is where he's playing at now. But hopefully we can close out with him. It's so important to have really good safeties. I think that we do have some good ones up there, but... Um, you know, that right there, the whole Will Brooks thing, that's been kind of bothering me. I've kind of been losing sleep over that. So on to the wide receiver that we have right here, Travis Smith. And it sounds like, man, everyone's been working on him. I got to listen to my dog, Justin Baker, talk about it. He said, man, look, I'm working on him. I think that we can win him. Uh, also heard Joakim Dotson saying the same thing. Said, man, look, we was all working on him very hard. It sounds like coming into this visit, it was between us and Alabama. UGA probably is no longer on the table because they offered him just a, a very disrespectful uh, NIL deal. And he said, man, look, y'all are no longer on my list. He wants to help take care of his family, and rightfully so. Like, why wouldn't you want to do that? So I think that we're going to be in a really good spot with this one. I'm very, you know, I cannot wait to hear what he has to say. But, P, what do you think about us adding Travis Smith to this class? Man, I think he's just a piece we need to add. You know, you're looking at adding that kind of that that high-level receiver. I like the guys we've added, Rodarius Jackson, Joakim Dawson. Mm-hmm. I think um, – Joakim, I think, is very underrated. And Bradaris is too, but I think those are both underrated guys. Travis Smith, you, you just, you know, you just love the way he plays, man. Big, physical, um, just already looks like an SEC type receiver. Mm-hmm. I think he comes in here and is immediate, an, an immediate guy for us that sees time next season. Um, and I feel, I feel confident. I, I, I listened to him talk a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, George was probably still his leader at the time, but he talked very highly of Tennessee. And then the fact that they go and they spit in his face, you know, George spits in his face, says, hey, you know, you ain't worth nothing but a penny to us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think now he has a personal vendetta. Yeah. Hey, come come to Knoxville. We see those guys every freaking season, mm-hmm. okay? And we hate them, okay? Yeah. We're going to give you the deck on ball. We're, we're going to go run up score on those guys. And uh, and I, I think that's appealing to him. You know, we saw, I know you posted the clip of his Alabama visit and <laughs> just that freaking, if, if you don't know what cringe means, go watch that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I'll, I'll add secondhand embarrassment for those guys. Yeah. But uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, hey, hey, hey. And then, too, it was funny because I don't think that the coach got it, right? Like, we know because, like, we we from we from the same area, right? So we could mm-hmm. tell that whenever she kept on saying, say it again, say it a lot, 
Like she was kind of like poking fun at him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I would say you the Alabama. Say it again. Yeah, yeah, say it again. <laughs> say it louder. The people in the back there. Is. It's like, man, come on, man. Like that that ain't even no no realistic pitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I I agree with you, Pia. I think the uh, I think Tennessee's in a, in a really good spot right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. For sure. Yep. Um, so now on to the only linebacker that came up this weekend, Christian Gass. Uh, four star guy. We really like his game. P. I mean, do you want to kind of you want to yeah, take that he, one? Yeah, he's uh he's got some burst. I mean, you you know, so the first player too on his film, he's he's got a different a different gear to him. Uh, athletic guy plays a lot of kind of that three four edge edge rush uh, edge rush guy mm -hmm. can get up to the passer, but also can you know drop back. You see him play coverage down the field. You see him come downhill. Um, you know, sideline to sideline guy. Very athletic. I think he goes about six two six three like two fifteen. Mm -hmm. Um, but a very, very athletic guy, very explosive. I think he would come on campus. He, I mean, we have Aaron Carter. Uh, sure, we got I mean, he, Spielman's he, young. I mean, well, I'm just, I'm just talking yeah. like athletically. Like he may be, he, he may step on, if he's stepping on campus tomorrow, he might be our most athletic linebacker. Wow. Stepping on campus tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. So hopefully we can, we can close out with him. What did you take away from what he had to say about the visit? Um, you know, he, he didn't say a ton. He just mentioned that he, uh, likes the coaching staff. We're very real, very genuine. And, uh, you know, they, that we mentioned that he could play inside and outside, which he said he loved that. And uh, he just kind of needs some, you know, they asked him, like, what he's looking for. And he wants, you know, a place where he feels comfortable with the coaches mm -hmm. and a place uh, that's going to set him up for the NFL where he can showcase his talents and uh, showcase what he, can, what he can do to NFL scouts. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like Tennessee kind of fit a lot of those molds there, but I'm not sure. I know I've heard that he's a Georgia lean, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of see if they're willing to add him. I know they got a bunch of backers. So we'll kind of see how it goes with him. It, it, it may be a deal where we either get him or Pilate. You know, maybe that type yeah. of deal. And the other one goes to Georgia, maybe. Yeah, too, man. I would love if we could get both of those guys. But, I mean, you know, with with Christian Gass being from Covington, a lot of times whenever you see players from the state of Georgia going to the University of Georgia, they're usually from some of these, like, more country areas. And Covington would be more, like, it's more of that. Uh, it's a little bit more country. So that might kind of, I mean, I could kind of maybe see him going there. But they've got a lot of good linebackers already committed in this class. And then this, you know, speaking of uh, Jaden Pilati, saw some of his, uh, some of his pictures and stuff down there at UGA. Um, I mean, you know, they definitely look pretty happy. We'll see how everything kind of plays out. That's another player that just, that Justin Baker, his teammate said, he feels really good about Tennessee's chances as well. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like what's going to happen? Because he has been committed to UGA for such a long time. And I think he's going to be a guy that you kind of have to take all the way to signing day. Um, so, you know, it, it really ain't over. It's probably not gonna be over for a while with him. That's just kind of where I'm at with it. Even if he does kind of come out and flip, you just got to keep a very close eye out, uh, for that. But let's get into the two cornerbacks. They came up here. A whole lot of good news with both of these players. It sounds like we could be, uh, getting some announcements with both of these guys very, very soon. So Trey Poteet, um, he is a three-star cornerback. He's from Wisconsin. And I think that he's probably going to play more like safety. Um, just because if you look at his skill set, you know, um, he looks more like a safety. Like you, you like him better playing zone than you like him playing man to man, at least me. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, his, the level of competition that he's going up against, it's very low. Um, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think that he will be a good player for us, but I'm expecting him to be more of a safety for us. Uh, but mm -hmm. P have you, did you, did you get a chance to kind of look at some of his film? Yeah. Yeah. I checked out his film. You told me we might get an announcement for him. I went and looked him up and, uh. Man, you know, it, it took me a while to put my finger on it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're not gonna like my my player comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'll tell you, player comparison is Trayvon Flowers. Now, <laughs> you know, seriously, seriously, okay, it's Trayvon Flowers. But you know, oh, wait, but wait. I, I I saw some clips of him that I said, okay, I can see his feet. You know, I can see things that they like. Mm -hmm. I think I think they can get him and coach him up and put him in position to be successful. But he doesn't look terrible. You know, I mean, I mean, no, those things that you yeah, like no. about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll be a solid player. Yeah. I think he may, may need some development, but I think he'll be solid. Yeah, so what what I love about his his game overall is that what you're going to be getting with him is a player that uh, is going to be really good. I think in coverage, I think it's going to be a lot better in coverage than like a Trayvon Flower. That that that's just me personally. Yeah. And then I also <laughs> yeah. love his willingness to be physical, right? Like I mean, he comes up, he gets off blocks well. You know, uh, he he sees the field well, and he will thump you. Okay, he's listed. I think like six foot and a half, 170 pounds. Imagine him in about a year or two up to about, you know, maybe 195, about 200. With the way that he likes to play, he's going to be enforcing and inflicting some pain. That's why I said that he's a guy that I could see either playing at strong safety or at free. And I think that in a few years, he's going to do it at a really, really high level. It's just, you know, like our, our whole point with him is 
it's kind of hard to get a good gauge um, from watching his films because like the level of talent is pretty low. And then you're seeing him doing a lot of different things. But he's a very versatile athlete. I think that he can and will add a lot to our volunteer team. Now, mm -hmm. on to Onus Konaman, a four-star cornerback. I think that he is more of a true cornerback. He's got good length. He's about six foot two, about 180-ish pounds, whatever. But sounds like he also really loves Tennessee. I think he was on live with Braylon Staley last night. And it sounds like, you know, he's all vol, but we're waiting on that announcement to come out officially. But that's really big, P, because he came up and saw us at the 865 Live event, said, hey, look, I, I love Tennessee. Tennessee's my new number one. And then he goes down to Florida State. I want to say like the day after or like that same week, names him as his new number one, but then he comes back up to Knoxville for like a 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. We're still working on him. And then after this OV, sounds like we are now back at his number one spot. But what do you think about his game, Pete? Oh, yeah, that's huge. Well, well, first, let me just go back real quick and let's clarify yeah. one thing on, on Petit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I say you're not going to turn on flowers, I don't know if something he plays. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just something about him to remind me of. And it's like I said, oh, okay. Faison Brandon yeah. reminds me of Joe Milton just a little bit, the way he plays. Like, something about him. I think it's better than Channel Flowers. But yeah. um, on to, on to uh, Conan Banny, um, you know, I was watching some of his film, too. He's he's a long range of guy, um, will, willing to be physical. He's almost college ready from, like, his body perspective. I'm not sure exactly what he measures in that. I think it's about 6'2", 6'1 and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, about 185, 190. Um, he has really, really good size. So I think he's a guy, again, just like you see a common theme, especially for our DBs, these guys can play pretty much any position in the secondary. He's another guy that fits that mold. Could could be a guy that adds in the safety, especially if we don't get the guys we want um, in this class. Maybe he bumps back. But uh, I think it's huge for us being able to go ahead and get him locked in uh, after he was kind of back and forth between us and Florida State. Um, I like him a lot. I think he'll definitely uh, help this team out. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, something else that I love about his film is that he almost runs the routes for the wide receivers. So I think that he could definitely be a shutdown, lockdown type of a cornerback. So whenever that announcement does come, or, you know, if it does come, that's going to be huge for us. But I think that we did a really solid job, P, this weekend. Um, you know, it sounds like it so far anyway. We have not heard from everybody just yet because we got to get this thing out to y'all in time uh, before the big time ball game starts at 2 p.m. But uh, you know, I think that we are going to still, you know, I feel like we do still have a pretty good shot to finish top five. We'll see what happens over the course of these next couple of weeks. Is there anybody else, P, that you could just think of kind of like off the cusp that you would like to talk about today uh, that you feel like Tennessee is, is in a pretty good shot with? Um, nobody really comes to mind. Uh, you know, I feel good about everybody we're, we're, we're in on. You know, I think we got a chance to finish this class really, really strong. A bunch of big-time receivers, big-time O-linemen, um, you know, D-linemen. I mean, this is a very well-rounded class. I think we see a lot of kind of immediate impact guys or guys that we know for sure, like down the line will be guys where, you know, we're, we're glad we got them on the roster. So this staff's doing a great job. These visits have been great. Everybody walks away from the visits blown away. Can we close these guys out? Because I think, like I said, we have a chance to be top five when it's all said and done. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So that's going to be it for this one, y'all. But thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And mm -hmm. we will see y'all in just a minute. Thanks. Peace.